this isn't me bragging at all, but I've heard from several commenters that I kind of look like Tom Hardy, and but I've never seen it. Of course, I've been looking at this ugly mug for 40 years, so I know the little differences and such. But I don't know. People may be onto something. I kind of see it now. Okay, people. Welcome back to another Foosh Review. Yeah, that's gonna get old before this is over. Tonight I'm taking a look at the Metacom Mafex number 52, The Dark Knight Rises Bane. Now personally, I feel that Metacom has been killing it with this line. The Suicide Squad figures up and down a little bit, you get some size differences and such, but with the Nolan trilogy, I, I, they are just going balls to the wall with it. Yeah, I'd like to see a Gordon, maybe some other secondary characters, but you get the villains, you get the heroes, you get the anti heroes and my display is gonna look pretty damn good now looking at the box here I I never noticed that they put some kind of artwork up here in this corner but you get the actual figure down here you get a big nice window showing most everything that's in there there may be something back here but you see everything on the side pretty promotional shot on the back more promotional shots jacket no jacket separate arms walking away cool shot accessories then you get some warning some unreadables around here probably says something like <laughs> on the other side the figure looking all cool top same thing the bottom more warnings uh, legalese barcode but I'm gonna get this out of the box and uh, see how this measures up to the rest of the figures we've gotten so far and there we go all out of the package and I have to say man the sculpt on this thing is fantastic it's just imposing it's it's an action figure yeah I I know but I look at it from some angles and I think oh that's kind of scary all the detail that you could have asked for on a movie Bane like this this figure has it the inner lining of the jacket it it actually looks fuzzy yeah in pictures because of the harsh shadow it it looks a little bit rough but it just looks fantastic against the smoothness of the outside jacket not that it's devoid of detail or anything the pockets uh, the slight wrinkling here and there the leather look to it I really, really dig it. And then his tactical gear underneath, he's got the straps on his chest, all the little grooves, everything is sculpted on the belt, the pants, the wrinkles, the knee pads, the boots, just everywhere you look, there's a little bit of detail waiting for you to find it. And the paint too, I thought, you know, Bane's costume's a little bit plain, it'd be a little bit boring, but the more I look around it, there's some browns, there's some greens on the straps, there's some blues even hidden in there somewhere. The buckles on the gloves, the belt uh, here and there, and then even the grommets down on the boot, they all have a metal paint to them to differentiate them from the rest of the costume, or well, clothes really. It's just fantastic, both the paint and the sculpt here. And then get up to the head, it looks like Bane. Now I haven't watched the movie in a while, I watched a couple of clips and I did notice some veining on the side of his head, but it only seems to be really prominent on the left side, his left side, our right. It's a little bit rougher than the other side, but you can see a faint hair paint to it, like a little bit of stubble, and then the eyes nicely painted. It doesn't look as fuzzy as we've seen with past Mafex that's using the printing tape. Either they're getting a lot better at it, or they just went ahead and painted this on since it was just some stubble, some eyes, and eyebrows. But the metal look to the mask uh, thing, the pain, whatever this is. Again, they could have went with one or two colors, but there's some silver, there's some black, there's some lighter gray, there's some darker gray, there's some gunmetal. Just a lot of paint apps for something that should be, well, could have been really simple. As you can see, that's my only really big paint grab is just a pinpoint right there. And it sticks out at you because it's skin tone and some stubble. But on this side, yeah, rubber. Now the crotch is a rubber piece. It's just covering the hips and it goes up to the body and it's okay but it seems like the left side gets stuck on it a lot and wants to drag it into the articulation while the right it just kind of flows into the piece whenever you bring it up even if you drop it down it still wants to go inside the crotch it, yeah and then it seems like the top of the boot should be a swivel like this is a whole separate piece but I think it's glued there's no swivel there there's swivel in the ankle but because of the laces on the boots are a little bit off the knee, they kind of point out, 
I, I'd like to bring them in just a little bit, but I can't seem to get that to turn. Now, I do have a couple of more gripes, huge negative complaints. It's just a couple of nits that I have, but I'm going to go over the accessories first, and then we'll get into the articulation. I'm switching it up a little bit, but it'll be easier to go over articulation once I show the accessories. Now, Bane comes with several sets of hands. He comes with the open hands that's on him in the package. He's got a set of, like, tensed fingers. He comes with a couple of grip hands, even though he doesn't come with anything to hold and then he has a pair of fists and to switch those out it's not really a mushroom peg you just pull and it comes off it's held on there by friction or how tight the hole is on the peg <laughs> and the other one slips right on I didn't really have a problem with any of these hands the holes being too small for the peg he also comes with two Batman helmets uh, they're broken well they're in different stages of broken one has just kind of the bottom of the cowl missing and the other has pretty much a third missing with the ear gone and then the top of the head a little bit and then his biggest feature is the arms pop off now if you look in there you'll see that the jacket is sculpted kind of up towards the hole it kind of covers it too that's to close the gap whenever you do have the arm in it if you look and it comes up you can't see skin under there. That's very cool. It makes it a, just a tad bit difficult to peg. You gotta go around that sculpted piece and then kind of push down. But once it's in there, it's in there. And the other thing about this, you can shift the arms up and it gives you that nice flow from shoulder to arm. There's not a big gap there. But you pull these out on both sides, slip the jacket off, and he also comes with bare arms. They just pop in there, not a big deal at all. And I like the sculpt, I like the look, but these seem to be kind of an afterthought because if you don't pay attention to it and you start posing you're gonna get a big gappy mess right there it kinda looks like they're just there I mean you can see the big ass socket made for a jacket and then these the shoulders I don't know the shoulders should have been a little bit bigger I guess or the peg not so long but you wouldn't get the range that you get so it's really a trade-off but with the arms switched out I can go over articulation a lot better he's got a dumbbell joint at the top of the neck and then another one or at least a ball joint down at the bottom he gets a great range of movement can bury his chin can look all the way up pretty much nice tilt both ways and then swivels it's a ball joint going into the torso out to a hinge and swivel in the shoulder so you can get up down forward back out to 90 swivel all the way around swivel at the bicep double elbow gets up to about right there and then on the sleeve arm you get less because of the wrinkle sculpt on it you get a swivel hinge swivel at the wrist uh, get up and down or you can twist it bring it around and then you can get side to side the torso is another minor gripe here there's a ball in the mid torso and there's a ball at the waist but they left the waist really gappy again for range of motion so you can get forward you can get back he, he exposes belly there a little bit nice tilt both sides but you have to pay attention to where you are because if you bring it forward it looks like it guts out push it back it blends in or you can also get it shifted side to side and then it's a pain in the ass to get straight up and down again the hips are on a drop down joint and then a ball going out to kind of a swivel and socket thing something but you drop down you can come all the way out you can get back almost all the way out there's swivel double knee comes up to about right there I think it's a ball in the ankle you can get back you can get forward that also allows for tilt back and forth and swivel and then there's a hinge at the toe I've went out of order now I have to figure out where I'm going no oh comparisons here he is with the Mafex Batman Begins Batman gotta remember Tom Hardy is 5'9 wait I'm 5'9 and Christian Bell is six foot so having them beside each other like this Batman's supposed to be taller they kind of fake it in the movie where Bane looks a little bit bigger but this would be the actors sizes when it comes to the Nolan trilogy the Mafex and the SH figure arts figures are pretty much the same damn size at least between the Mafex begins and this figure arts Dark Knight Rises I think it is so if you wanted this Bane to go in with your figure arts collection here you go for giggles here he is with the Mafex Catwoman I mean Selena Kyle the heels kind of blow out any kind of comparison you could have here but you can see that her shoulders are lower than Bane so this works for me but if you mix all your movie stuff together like the Mafex Suicide Squad and the Mafex Nolan trilogy that's not gonna work for some reason Mafex went a little bit smaller with their Nolan trilogy and then usual larger Medicom Mafex size for the Suicide Squad Harley should not be this big or well Bane should not be this small next to Harley yeah no this is about all I could figure out for his grip hands. <laughs> he's holding his jacket. I can't even get those in the hands. But at the end of the day, 
I'm super happy with this. It fits in with the rest of my Nolan Trilogy Mafex figures. At least so far, we've only got the two. Well, three. We also got Joker 3.0, and then you can count the bank robber Joker. But as far as Dark Knight Rises, we've only gotten Selina so far. Now, I will admit, I don't care for this figure too much with the bare arm look. It just looks a little bit too joiny, a little bit too marionette. But with the jacket on... Ooh, yeah, that's where it's at. That's where he's just standing there. Marking out orders. You go over here. You stand on this shelf. He's just a badass. Yeah, I have a few nits, but those really do not make me like the figure any less. This makes me even more excited about the rest of the Mafex offerings for this line. Cannot wait. So if you like this review, comment, like, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the floosh.